Hello everyone and welcome back. This is the fourth episode inside of the Space Invaders series where I'm trying to recreate um, the Space Invaders game using Pygame. So in the last video I showed you guys I got up to making the lasers work and then I tried to implement some kind of collision system. Um, but that didn't really work so I ended up um, rewriting the entire code base because for some reason the lasers just weren't really working properly. And um, after a while I've got this, uh, this method working here. I'm able to fire multiple lasers and then I'm also able to um I'm gonna add the system for checking for collisions afterwards. And um this system is also gonna be um the enemy ships are also gonna be able to use this system so I don't have to rewrite the entire thing. Um so if I go on to uh, it, um, I made a new file in this project called uh, um new lasers.py and in the old lasers.py I just commented out all the lines here and then I'm not really using this class, so I just wanted to test out how the new how the um the new laser mechanic is going to work inside of this class. And then I just changed some code inside of the ship class and the space invaders and um, space invaders file. And then it was um I got this kind of mechanic working. So the first thing which I did was that I decided that I wanted to be able to fire multiple lasers at once. So in the last, um, so what happened before is that I could only shoot one laser on the screen. I just keep on recycling that same instance of the laser and then uh, repeatedly showing it on the screen once it's got off it. So I made a class called lasers here, and inside this lasers class, I have three instance attributes which I want to take care of. So I've got the laser X, the laser Y, and the laser image. I put in this, this constructor method here, so I can set these values um, to whatever I want whenever I make the instance of this laser class in the Space Invaders file. And the reason I'm putting these ones here is because I want to be able to change these. Because whenever I'm whenever I'm making the player shoot, I want it to come out the top of the player ship image right here. But I also want to be able to change it for the laser, um, so the enemy ship, so he can, so this enemy can fire, um, pointing downwards, and then that would just make it easier for me instead of having to, um, having to make a new instance and then do something weird with it to make it work. So I set the laser X to be equal to this, and then I change the Y position so that it will, I change the X position so that it will come, in right in the middle of the enemy, because the laser X position, if you, if I just remove this for now. Uh, so here I just comment this part out. Um, if I run it now, you'll see that it will come out the t um, the the top left side of the um player image. That's because Pi Game recognizes the Im the sorry the images on the screen, and um, by the top left corner right here. So it's around this part. So it's also going to shoot it here. So that's kind of off center. So I centered it by just adding 24 to the x coordinate. This was me just trying it, um, trial and error, and it managed to work. The self dot laser y. Um, I'm planning to change this. This is just for testing purposes when I was doing this. So um, I wanted to make the laser start here because I was mainly just using it with a ship class. I'm probably going to do something so that I am going to um. I'm going to set the laser y to be equal to 461, the minus 23 if it is, um, if it's going to be the um, player ship, otherwise it's going to leave it to whoever coordinate it's going to be if it's the enemy ship. Then I've also have the laser image right here, and then I have the laser's velocity, which is how much the laser is going to move each time I refresh the screen, so that it continuously moves off the screen, and then once it's off the screen, it's removed from the list. So I made this draw laser method, which, so um, to understand this, what I did was that I implemented all the functions for actually shooting the lasers here, and then I made a bunch of little methods here to help me do that, so that I have to write out all the code in the ship class. So, um, the reason I did, the, um, did it this way is because whenever, I'm, the way I'm doing is that I'm making a new instance of the laser class every single time I shoot a bullet. So then if I, whenever the bullet's off the screen or later I'm going to add systems for collisions or whenever the laser collides with an enemy, I want it so that um, the laser instance will be popped off the list and then that way I'll be able to, um, I'll be able to control, I'll be able to have, it'll make it easier for me to manage it basically. So that's the main reason I put it that way, but that also means that I can't really add any other functionality for the shooting the laser here. Because this laser instance is going to be put, um, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be removed from the laser bullet list eventually, 
once it's got off the screen or it hit the enemy. So all the stuff that I put in here is not going to really last that long. So I, I've implemented it all in the ship class and then it worked perfectly this way. So if I go back into the new laser um, file here. So then I have this draw laser and it will just draw this laser image which I have made here. This instance attribute laser image which is equal to the laser image which we provide here. As one of the parameters to this constructor method. And then I'm also going to be drawing it onto the screen, which this variable I've inherited in the ship and sorry in the main class. And then I just imported it over to here. Right, and doing from the file main import everything. We could also just do import main. However, I don't really I just wanted to put every input anything if I'm planning to add another class or something else into the main class. So the main file. And then I'm just going to be drawing it at the laser's X and laser's Y position. Then I also have this function here for moving the laser. So here I'm going to be taking in a, a parameter called Sprite. And here I wrote a little comment down. I should probably just turn this into this. So if I show you guys what this does, if I just, uh, oops, wrong place. If we go into the ship class, what that will allow me to do is if I can find it. Um, self dot laser new laser. What this basically allows me to have is I'll now press Control Shift. Actually, if I scroll here, so if I do laser dot, uh, let's just do the space of this class instead. So if I do, uh, let's make a laser ship. Laser is going to be equal to laser. Then, if I do Control Shift Space. Well, oh sorry. Now if you do control shift and space, I can see some information about what parameters I can put in. So the lasers X, the lasers Y, and then I have to put an image. So I just do something like main dot player laser, which is a constant, a variable I defined inside of the main class. So the main, get yeah, the main class over here, and then if I go back into space invaders file, now what I can do is I can do laser dot to move. What is it here? So if I do Control Shift Space, as you can see, I will get this um, bit of information here saying that this is a parameter called Sprite, and then the Sprite is going to be equal to an integer one or zero. If the integer, is, if the um, the value is going to be zero, then the Sprite is going to be an enemy ship. If the value is one, then it's going to be a player ship. I'll show you guys why I added that there in just a minute. So if I go here and remove, oh, I think I already moved it. Let me just make sure it still works. Yeah, it still works. Okay, let's go back onto the new lasers file. So, um, what happens is that I want to be able to use this um, laser class for both the player ship and the enemy ship. So, I just can reuse the same code instead of having to write it down all again. And then the thing is, I want to make sure that I want. I want to make sure that I know if it's an enemy ship or a player ship. So, what happens is that. Whenever this is an, whenever I'm shooting the bullet from the player, is I'm going to be um, subtracting the y value from the laser velocity, and that's because I want it to go up. So the origin point of this um, Pi game screen is going to be here, so that's zero zero, and then my screen width and height is six hundred by six hundred pixels. So for me to make this laser go up the screen, I have to subtract it. So right now, let's just assume this is four hundred, so the y position is four hundred. If I want to make it go up. To the or um up here, which is towards the origin point, which is zero zero, I have to subtract it. So it'll be three hundred fifty five is going to be here, three hundred fifty is going to be here. It won't be that dramatic, um, or that that significant change, but you get the idea. So I have to subtract it to make the bullet go higher. And then the thing is, so if I know that the sprite is going to be one, I know it's going to be a player ship. So I'm going to subtract the laser's y position by the laser velocity. And then if the um, sprite is going to be zero, I'm going to add the laser's y position to the laser velocity. And that is because if I go back here, the ships, this enemy ship's going to be shooting downwards. And since it's um, it's going to be shooting downwards, I have to increase it because it's going to be going towards from the origin point to the um, this point here, which is 600 by 6, 600 um, on the y-axis. So I'll just keep on adding over to the y, um, y laser's y position. And then that way I can I can reuse the code for both the ship and also the enemy. So the player and the player ship and the enemy ship. And then I also have this laser method here. So what I did before was if I go back to my ship class, instead of doing this laser dot laser thing right here, I can just do I have to do laser dot draw laser, then I have to do laser dot 
um, draw, what's the thing is move laser. Yeah, I have to do it like this. So I just made this laser method. And then what I did here was that I made it so that, uh, where am I? Oops, wrong file. So I made it so they just cause these two for me and then I pass in this uh, this parameter here called sprite which is this sprite right here. <clears throat> then I also put in these two property methods here. The reason I put them as property is just that it's going to be getting the x position of the laser and the y position of the laser. I mainly just use this to test out if the um, mechanic worked. I don't really need them right now, I'm probably just going to delete them later. So now I can show you guys how this actually worked. So if I go back here and then I go to the ship class, as you can see I have imported from I imported main here. I didn't actually import the laser class. And the reason is I'm just going to be handing all of these as parameters which I'm going to ha which I'm going to fill in as arguments here in the space invaders file. So the first one's laser instance. So this is going to be the instance of the laser. And this laser class, which I is right here, so I'm making a new instance of the laser class when I press the space bar. I'll get into that in just a minute. So I also have this something here called update laser. So if update laser is going to be equal to false, so the thing is to make the laser actually move across the screen. If I just do it this way, then actually, no, I don't have to even do that, I can just do this. Um, Okay, so if I run it now, as you can see, you, you might have just saw that um, right there. So as you can see, these bullets are appearing on the screen, but there's this going on and then they're going off the screen, and they're not actually moving. The reason is because I need to update the position. So whenever I draw the laser onto the screen, I then need to make sure that this laser is going to be moving up the screen. And so what happened is that I wanted to, so the way we can, I'm going to get how we're going to do that in a minute, but the thing is, the thing you need to know right now is that I set this update laser to be false, which means I don't want to, this method's only going to be used for making a new laser. And then what's going to happen is, is that I'm going to, to this laser list, I made this um, instance attribute called laser list, which contains all the, um, all the laser, all the instances of the laser class inside of here. And then I'm just going to be adding this instance of the laser class, which I have added right here. So here, the player laser. Whenever I press the space bar, so whenever I press the space bar, and why did I put laser state is equal to true? I don't know why I put that. Oh, this is from before. Yeah, I should probably clean up my code first. Uh, this should work. Oh, it's probably because I commented out this line. Let's see. Make make sure this works, and then yes, yeah, still works. Okay. So I accidentally left that from the previous attempt when I was trying to make the lasers. So what's happening here is that I'm just going to be I'm just going to be adding this laser instance, and then this laser instance right here is going to be the player laser for the player. I didn't actually add the enemy ship. I tested the enemy ship and it does actually work. Um, I still really added in this example. So then I'm just looping through all the different um instances of the laser class inside of this laser list instance attribute. And then I've also, I'm just checking if this laser's Y position is going to be greater than the, um, the, so what happens is that this laser dot laser image that get higher. So I'm getting the height of the image. And then what I'm doing here is that I'm making sure that I only pop it off once the laser image, laser image is off the screen. So if the laser image is going to be off the screen, so what I can do is that if the laser's Y position is going to be greater than the minus 50 which so the um the actual image right here is just 50 pixels by 50 pixels so by the time it's off the screen which is going to be or origin point is going to be zero zero if i subtract 50 from that that's going to be one you can't see it on the screen i'm just saying that okay if this is got as long as it's greater than that i'm just going to be pulling this laser method and then that will just move the laser and if it's not going to be that so here it says ship type and then I just made this instance attribute here. So this is going to be, if I go back and this way here, uh, false. So that means I want to update the laser position, which I showed you guys in the previous, um, in the previous example there. So what, um, what I'm doing is I'm making sure that it's off the screen. Uh, so I make sure that, sorry, it's on the screen. Then I'm going to make the laser uh, move. And then if, if it's the laser position is going to be uh, less than minus 50, 
then it's going to be off the screen then I want to pop it off the laser and the laser list and the way I do that is using the pop method I could also have done something else so I could do something like laser list dot remove laser and the reason I use pop is because I for some reason the remove didn't really work properly it just started playing up and then whenever I tried pop it always worked properly and then I just stuck to that one and then just call the index of the laser here what I could have just done instead was that I could just do for laser underscore index comma laser inside of enter enumerate so what enumerate does if I can type okay so if I if I go open up a quickly if I quickly open up this to show you guys how this works so if I have a list which has um three there's three elements then I loop through all of it so for i in l print out i so we can get this if i do for i in enumerate so after you have to pass in two parameters i have to pass in two variables here which will be looping over so let's say um x comma y in enumerate then we put l we'll print out uh let's make this an f string so we can do index is then we put the index which is going to be x and then we put uh element so item three we will put that to be y okay so enumerate does is that this x put this x um variable added here just keeps track of the index of each item or element whatever you want to call it we're looping over in the list and then i can do it so instead of just doing that i can do a numerate list and then i can just say um we want to instead of just doing this word line of code right here we can just do uh let's just get rid of this and then we'll just replace this with laser index which is going to be the index of the current laser instance which is looping over um, I just stuck to this because it just seems a bit to be it just seems to be a bit more simple and um, yeah that's the main reason anyway so what I did here is that this update laser so as I was talking about updating the lasers position if I go back into the space invaders file you'll be able to see that um, right here I'm whenever I press a, I'm, whenever the the key I press is the space key I will make a new instance of this laser, this laser, sh uh, the player ship class where the players, um, the player ships play uh, X position and Y position, and then the the image is going to be this player laser, and then I've also, um, I've also made it so that whenever I sh the shoot laser method right here, so shoot uh, this shoot laser um, function right here, what's going to happen is I'm going to be shooting, I'm going to be adding this player laser instance, and I'm going to set it to false. So if I actually go back here. Um, whenever it's false, I'm going to be adding the new instance of that to the list. And then here, what I'm doing is, is that if, so in Pygame, we've got this dictionary here called locals. So if I open up the idea really quickly again, and then I'll do something like locals. It's basically a dictionary of all the different local, um, all the different local variables we have in the scope. And then we can also do globals to see all the global variables here inside the program so what we can do is i can j well there's two ways i could have done this i could say that for x in locals and then we can just do something like print out so if you can just do like if x is equal to player ship then we're just going to run this code here i think what you can do for this is a dictionary if i just want to go over all the keys in it i could do for key in locals dot keys i think yeah i think it's this okay yeah i think you could do it so you can sleep over the keys which will be that but i was just i did that instead of looping over i just said i just um pygame is method called in so you can just check a variable or something's inside of this dictionary or a list so i say if, if the player laser is going to be inside of this locals dictionary then i'm just going to shoot the player laser and then I'm going to set this to true, which 
will mean that it won't update it won't actually make a new instance of the laser if I set this to false well you'll see that you'll get this weird thing here where we're just making repeatedly making new instances of this laser class here and it just doesn't really work properly and that's because I'm making a new instance every single time I press the space bar and so every single time this I press the space bar and there's a player laser it's going to be duping or it's going to be refreshing the screen about around 60 times per second and then what's going to happen is it's going to it's going to create a bunch of new um, a bunch of new instances of the laser class and append them to the list which will make it so they won't actually work properly and it's going to make it go really fast and you won't be able to see it so this way it only makes the instances of the laser class whenever I actually press the spacebar and it just makes it easier and I'm also just oh, that's really it and then I'm also just updating this display here I also have um I also just made this kind of fun thing here where well before I can only press the space bar once and then it'll do it. When I, here with this one it, was, it allows me to check for multiple key presses so I can just do this and then make some a bunch of lasers like that. I was just doing it for fun and it ended up working quite well. So you can just hold it down like this. I'm also, what I'm planning to do is adding collision, I'm using Pygame Masks for collision and then I'm also planning to use, um, I'm also planning to add some sort of functionality so that I can um, I have some sort of cooldown so that this player can't just spam the bullet like this and then keep on shooting all the enemies down really quickly. And that's really it for today. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll try to upload the next video as soon as possible. I also made this into a GitHub repo so if you guys want to check it out, I'll leave a description in the I'll leave the link to the GitHub repo in the description below. I didn't really add any um, instructions in the readme about how to install it or set it up. I'm probably just going to add that later. It's quite simple anyway because it's Pygame. You just have to do pip install Pygame then clone this repo into whatever directory you want and then just run the python or python3 space invaders.py then it should work like that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to the channel and if you like this video I'll greatly appreciate it as well and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.